man, my life is busy. I've got a family. I'm trying to go to school. I've got my job. You know what? I really would like to serve right now, but you know what? I better take some time off. And once I'm done with school, and once... I can get, you know, better situated in ministry. My, you know, my one son will be off at college. You know what? Then, Pastor, I'll come back and serve. John didn't do that. John is the chairman of my deacons. John teaches Sunday school every week. John is one of my best phone callers of people, elderly and, 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 and uh, shut-ins in our church. John follows up, checks on them regularly. Calls visitors, there's people out here, he'll call me up and say, yeah, I checked on that guy. He writes letters to anybody who visits the church. He, one day I went into the office, I was looking for visitors cards because I wanted to go visit a family. You know what, they were gone. Guess who had them? John did. John had every reason, an earthly reason. I, I don't think there's a person in this room that would say, you know what, John, we understand. You need to take some time and get through school and then and, and, and get your job done. And, and then you can go out and you're going to be serving the Lord full time in the pastorate. You know what? We understand. We'll give you a pass. John wouldn't accept that. John says, no, i got to serve God now. I'll continue to serve God now and I will continue to serve Him more when I get through my schooling. And he's studying for that ministry and he's excited about that. We have a lady in our church. We have an Iwana Club program, which is a ministry to kids from, uh, we call them cubbies, which is three years old up through eighth grade. This woman has been a leader for over 50 years. She's 86 years old. Every week she comes and she still ministers to the kids. Now she can't run the circle as fast as she used to. And the kids have to lean in a little closer and shout a little louder when they say their verses to her. But you know what? She's still got arms that she can hug those children with and tell them she loves them. She's still got eyes that can watch them and listen to them and show love through those eyes. She's still got a voice that she can tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ. She's still got legs that carry her at a slow pace into that building every week, Wednesday after Wednesday, to minister to kids. I'm going to tell you something. A long time ago, she could have said, you know what, I've retired. I've done my bit. I am finished. But you know what? She keeps casting her bread out on the water, casting it out. Um, Howard Hendricks, the late Howard Hendricks, professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. One year I was listening to him preach, and I remember this from the message. He says, I have people who tell me I'd rather burn out than rust out for Jesus. He says, I didn't realize those were the only two options. He says, I'd rather live out for Jesus. And some people are saying, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire from God's service. You know, I've done my bit. Let those younger people serve now. Some of you young people are saying, well, you know what? This isn't my time. In a few years, I'll serve. You know, and then I'll be better trained. And, you know, I'll have the fun in my life behind me and all that. Some of you are, are family uh, folks. And you've got a family at home. You say, you know, man, I'm so busy with my job and my family. I just don't have time to serve right now. And you know what? Everybody in this room would have an excuse, and it could be a, quote, valid excuse for not serving Jesus. I'm going to tell you, they don't matter, a hill of beans. They're excuses. Serve now. Cast your bread on the waters now. Don't hoard your life now. Give it to Jesus. Let him use it and he will return to you blessings umpteen fold over. Number four, or number three, excuse me. Sometimes life doesn't make sense. Look at verse five. As you do not know which way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of a child, so you do not know what works, know the works of the God who made everything. <laughs> you know what? I don't know how God works. I've been saved since I was 14 years old, 13 years old. I got baptized at 14. Got saved at 13 years old. I've been saved 40 years. I still don't understand the way God works all the time. Some of you have probably been saved 70 years or more, and you still say, I don't know how God works all the time. 
But just because you don't understand is no excuse for inactivity. It's an excuse to give up on God when you go on. Uh, There's no excuse for just giving up on God and going on with your life because something bad happened in it. And I've watched it happen. But you know what? I've been excited over the last few years to watch some people that I love in my church very dearly who've lost dear loved ones. Over the last four or five years in our church, you, you probably don't want to be a member of my church after I tell you this, but we've lost about five or six members through very strange circumstances. A lady came down yesterday, was at Returning Heart. She helped Tammy in the registration booth. And I, the truck that I drive and the trailer that I drive, the truck was his truck. And... Uh, her husband in September was driving. He he'd been he was in his early sixties. He was he was a sharp 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 guy. I mean, just super smart guy. And uh, there was nothing he couldn't do. He's one of those guys, good with his hands, good with his brain, anything he could do it. And uh, one day he was going to the doctor in September. And he'd gone to the same doctor for years and years and years, and he calls his wife and says, I don't know where I'm at. Where, where's the doctor's office at? November 1st, he died of a brain tumor. That was the first. We had another two other folks who died in quick succession through disease that wasn't expected. Then about a year ago, I got a call in the middle of the night from a young lady who's yelling in my ear, my dad, my dad's at the hospital. Come quick, my dad's at the hospital. I don't know what's going on. Go to find out her dad and her 16-year-old sister had been riding a motorcycle. Car turned in front of them. They plowed in the side of that car and both died that night. Last year, I'd finished the service. I was walking to the back. I was shaking hands with people as they left the auditorium. And a young lady in my church came up to me and said, so-and-so's dead. And I said, are you sure? Because he was in his late 30s, had seven kids. Not too long after that, my phone rings. And it's the wife, the mother of these seven children. And I had to go tell their three oldest boys that their daddy was dead. You know what, though? Those older boys... Two of those three older boys, man, they're busy serving the Lord every night with us. Two of the women who've lost their husband came to Angola with us this year and are serving the Lord. Life will do what it'll do. Things happen. God works in ways we don't understand, but we got to keep serving and keep doing for Jesus. Just because we don't understand why a tree may fall where it falls doesn't mean that we have an excuse to blame God and quit serving. Some of you may be going through difficult times in your life. You're in a shadow moment of your life. The sun doesn't seem to be shining on you and there seems to be a tragedy between you and that sunlight and you're in the shadow portion of your life and you're wondering, what is God doing right now? Can I tell you something? God's still on his throne. He's still in control. All still okay. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Keep serving. Keep serving. That's what Solomon's saying here. Let me give you the last verse here. So at any chance you get. Look at verse uh, 6. It says, In the morning sow your seed. In the evening do not withhold your hand. For you know which will prosper, neither this or that, or whether both alike, it'll be good. You know what? I live up in Illinois and one of the things is I live not far from farm country and one of the beautiful sights is in the evening time the farmers out on their tractors with lights on in the springtime they're disking tilling and putting the seed in and in the fall time you know what they're doing they're harvesting at nighttime with lights on they're working from morning from before dawn to after dusk because they don't know, you know, they don't know which seed they plant is going to be the good one. The one is the only ones you plant in the middle of the day, the good ones, or the ones you plant before dawn, or the ones that, 
No, they just keep planting. They keep planting. They keep planting. They keep planting. You know what? That's why we keep telling people about Jesus. You don't know which seed is going to sprout and which ones might not. So you keep planting. Because as Paul said, some plant, some water, but guess what? God gives the increase in the end. So keep planting. Keep planting. Keep planting. Keep putting those seeds out there. Keep putting your seeds out there because some seed will prosper and some won't. I want to close with a story that uh, James Dobson wrote in his book, When God Doesn't Make Sense. In 1945, a young associate pastor by the name of Cliff married his fiancée, Billy. Now, Cliff was an associate pastor. He didn't have a lot of money. And they saved up, and, and before their wedding, they had reserved a room at this fancy resort, this beautiful resort, and they prepaid for it, and they had it all set to go. And uh, they, were, they were so excited. They got married. They didn't own a car, so they took the bus. The bus dropped them off at the resort. They walk up to the front desk of what they thought was a resort, and between the time they had reserved their room and the time that it was when their wedding was, it had changed into a rehabilitation center. And they did not take overnight guests. Everything they had, they'd used for their wedding and their rehearsal. I mean, for wedding and, and their honeymoon. And it was spent. So they went out to the road. It was out in the middle of nowhere. And they hitchhiked to a grocery store several miles down the road. The owner of the grocery store was, was sympathetic to their situation. He let them stay in a room over the store. And the owner quickly caught on that they were Christians and he referred them to a friend that had a nicer place they could spend their honeymoon together. And they were enjoying it. And during the week, their host invited them to attend a youth rally at a year, nearby Christian Conference Center. And one night, while they were at this youth rally, the regular song leader was sick. And so they said, would you be willing to lead the song service? Now I'm going to tell you, here's another guy that could have given a thousand excuses. Why don't you come to the youth meeting with us? You know, I just got married. I'd like to spend time with my new bride. Oh, come on, serve the Lord with us. I'm on my honeymoon, man. Right now, I just want to relax with my new bride. And who would have blamed him, right? Who would have blamed him? But you know what? Being the servant of God he was, he took charge of the song service that night. And he led the music right before a young evangelist named Billy Graham stepped up to preach. And Cliff Barrows met Billy Graham that night and formed a ministry team that preached the gospel throughout the world for 50 years. Sometimes our plans don't work out the way we thought they should, don't, do they? But you know what? If we just follow God's lead, sometimes God has better plans for us than we could ever have. But you know what it means? It means we got to cast our bread on the waters. It means we got to throw ourselves out there into serving and not hold back. It means we need to be doing what God has called us to do. Mark Hall from Casting Crown said this, Ministry is for today. Calling is for today. Right now. God has a place and a purpose for you right now. I've never had God tell me what he wants me to do a year from now. I've never had God tell me what he wants me to do a year from now. Because where you are is where you're planted. And you've got to bloom where you're planted. I've always felt that if God wants me somewhere, he'll take me there. I don't, you know, it's not like I don't make plans for the future. I've got some plans and thoughts that I hope come true. But you know what? Right now, I'm pastor of Fox Valley Baptist Church in East Dundee, Illinois. Right now, God's opened doors for me to be able to come and do prison ministry in Louisiana a few times a year. Right now, God opened a door for me to preach at Satsuma Baptist Church 
in Livingston, Louisiana, or Satsuma, whatever this town is here, this place. And you know what? I'm going to, wherever God leads me, that's what I'll do. I've always felt like what God, where God leads me, I'll follow, and what God feeds me, I'll swallow. And I've swallowed a lot over the years. <laughs> and God's been good to me and my wife. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Serving God is the most exciting thing you can do with your life. You will never, ever, ever regret it. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And God will take you places you can't imagine, do things with you you can never imagine. When I was a young man marrying my wife, and we were being called into ministry, I could not imagine the adventure that he's taken me on. One of the young ladies that's here with us today, Rebecca, we met her at our church in first ministry in Baltimore. We served there 10 years as a youth pastor, principal, associate pastor. Whatever Pastor Johnson wanted me to do, I did. It was a large church, about 1,000 people, and it was always hopping. We met her. She was how old when we met her, hon? third grade she was third grade and God just brought her and her three sisters and her two sisters into our life and uh, when we moved here to Illinois God gave us uh, moved to Illinois God gave me and my wife uh, four foster kids that we eventually adopted along with our daughter and uh, we needed somebody to help us with the kids and Rebecca had finished high school had gone to a little bit of college was kind of in between in, in life and so we said hey why don't you come help us with the kids her middle name was Alice we thought it fit it was like the Brady Bunch she could be our Alice you know and uh, we can't get rid of her now she stayed with us and she's a, a child evangelism fellowship mission, missionary she comes with us every year to whatever prison we decide to go to whatever She's the children director of our church, and I'll tell you what, God just put her in her life. But you know what? That's the kind of blessings God's led me across in all my years of ministry. The two other folks in the front here, row, row here, Jason and Amber, they live in the house next to us on the church property. Jason is an architect by trade and a builder of everything. I'll tell you, he, there ain't nothing he can't build. Most of those games you saw out there, Jason designed or built. But you know what? They've just served the Lord where God's put them. And they keep serving. Amber serves in the school. She's an artist. She does our bulletin every week. All those different things. You know what? There's a place for everybody in the, in the body of Christ. That's why we're called a body. I don't want to live without my toes. I don't want to live without my fingers. I don't want to live my eyes or whatever. And God doesn't want to live without you in his service either. He wants you to serve him. He's given that opportunity. Cast your bread on the waters and see where it takes you. And God will give you a return for it. Father God, we thank you this morning for the opportunity we've had to look into your word. And I thank you for the message that it's had. Lord, use it. Grow us. Keep us close to you. And Lord, if there's one here who doesn't know Jesus as Savior, doesn't know what we're talking about when we talk about serving or that seed that's been planted, may today be the day they see that Jesus came, died, buried, rose again the third day, and by simply putting their trust in him as Savior, they can have eternal life. Lord, if today's that day, may in the quietness of this moment, they say, Jesus, save me. I know I'm a sinner. Save me. I put my trust in you. Make me your child.